Well, hello friends, today is a big day. We're gonna be planting a lot of the plants I have along this new path I put in just recently. So if you have seen the previous video, I talked about the path I put in, what the overall feel and concept was, but said I was waiting to do plantings till all the plants came in and until I was ready. And now I'm really getting ready to start putting all these in. What you're gonna see behind me is a lot of plants laid out with my dog Kip. Kip is watching, we have water for him so he can supervise on the sidelines. So what we're gonna do here is kind of go through what I'm doing, my process, my thought process, but also all the plants I'm choosing and why I'm choosing them. So this is kind of a new concept for me in the sense that this is the first bed I have started completely from scratch. Most other beds I hobble together, remove things, add things, extend the bed, but this is the first one that was a blank slate. And I'm really going out of my lines a little bit and I'm going mostly plants that will somewhat naturalize, fill in, be somewhat eco-friendly, be really good for pollinators, really easy care perennials that can just be mowed off in the spring once the temperatures are at the right temperature and all the pollinators have woken up. I can come in and just use my push mower and grind all this down to self-compost right on the bed. So I'm really taking a different ethos with this flower bed and trying to think of one, easy care, two, what will somewhat be good for the environment, and three, what in the future I won't have to water all the time. It can take some dry conditions once established, that full brunt of the sun, and really take care of itself, and that's what I want here. So what you notice is, last time we prepared the bed, I prepared the soil, I amended it with some compost, I added some fertilizer just for that all-purpose kind of extra ump for these plants. And now what I started to do is lay out the plants. And I think the first thing that can be really hard when you're going through and picking plants is one, knowing your location. This location, you can see up into the sky, it gets full sun pretty much all day from about nine o'clock in the morning on until four or five, actually during the summer, probably not till six o'clock, does it get any shade. So these things need to be able to take that full sun, a lot of heat, it can be a hot wind during the summer. So I'm picking a lot of these plants that will do well here. What another thing you have to remember when you're doing this is, what is your overall size gonna be? So obviously I know the depth of my bed. I have to also take into account that these trees will continue to grow. They'll continue to grow outwards unless I wanna trim on them at some point. Even some of these, I have a smaller one here that I had to patch in at one point. It's gonna to grow too. And you have to know what your overall size of the established plantings like this row of arborvitae are going to be. These are nigra arborvitae, so they will continue to grow and have that nice dark green growth, but it could encroach on the flower bed. So all that needs to be accounted for. The first things I'm going to show you are some of the plants obviously I'm choosing. Now, one of these you're going to say, well, yeah, you love this. I use it all the time, and I do, and it's Millennium Allium. What I like about Millennium Allium, it's obviously in the Allium family. It's a perennial Allium in that it comes up in the spring and looks kind of like this, and then it gets its beautiful little lollipop flowers on later in kind of mid to late summer, and the pollinators go crazy for them. They're usually just a buzz, which most of these flowers will be, with pollinators. Also, it's great, deer resistant, rabbit resistant. They do really well once established in drier conditions. They do well slightly sandy soil if you have that, or do good with a good draining loamy soil. In general, Millennium Allium was somewhat bred to be one that does not reseed and is just a nice clumping form. I have found over the years that it does reseed. So even though it's not supposed to, I have certain plants of Millennium Allium that do reseed. It's something to take account for. A lot of the plantings I'm choosing out here are ones that can naturalize, meaning they could grow. Some people feel get out of control, but that's why I'm putting them in a bed that's really gonna be a little bit of a mixture, almost a cottage garden effect. And the reason I'm choosing this out here is, one, I want it just to fill in the whole bed and take over. Obviously, I'm going to have to mulch it when I'm done, but over the years, I want this bed just to be filled with perennials, blooms, easy maintenance. I am also someone design-wise. You can see that my path was very straight, very clean lines. Since the bed itself and the flowers in it are going to be kind of chaotic, I call that controlled chaos within a defined line. So I have my defined line that will always be a really nice straight line, but then there'll be chaos beyond it in the flower bed, and that's okay with me. So in front we have slightly smaller plants, but they're still varying heights. So right beside some of this Millennium Allium is going to be beautiful. I love Blue Fortune Hyssop. Now, the one thing you have to remember, 
is this is one that will naturalize. What I like about it is it does really well in full sun. Pollinators love it. Butterflies love it. It's an easy one. It will grow and sometimes naturalize and plant more plants around it. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it getting into larger clumps and growing into each other. But make sure you account for those things. I think over the years, you know, we sometimes try to control things too much. And that's when we get to too manicured of gardens, which I sometimes even feel like I have. I keep my really manicured gardens up around the house maybe, but then places like this, I want to be able just to fill in. Now, also in this line, kind of, I'm dividing the bed somewhat into the back half and the front half. Another one here towards the front half are gonna be one of my favorite salvias, which is the Caradonna salvia. I use this a lot because what I like about it is it stays very upright for salvia. It doesn't flop over as quickly. It also just has a nice deeper, not only bloom, but the stem the bloom comes on, if you look closely at the plant, can get this nice deep hue to it. So if you look at the stem here, it's already in that dark color. That will continue to darken. And then it sends up these beautiful spikes of flowers. So I'm doing a lot of shades of purples here. The Millennium Allium are purple. This is purple. The hyssop is purple, but different shades. When I try to design a bed or choose a bed that goes together, I love to sometimes stick with a palette and go with different shades in that palette. So different hues of purple all together to me make a really nice cohesive look, but also add variation in color. Now I am switching up the color in two ways and I'm kind of excited about this because it's a little homage to how I grew up and what my mom loved some of the flowers, but it will also just add bright pops of color back here. So what I also have towards the back, more because these will get much bigger clumps and somewhat really grow in, are just very traditional black-eyed Susans. You can't go wrong with them. They're just the Goldstrom variety, which is kind of that, I just think quintessential yellow pop of color. And they're super easy. I mean, this is the thing with them. They love full sun. They love some nice rich dirt, but can do well in a lot of conditions. They can do well in some clay if you have that. It isn't always that they need perfect soil by any means. They're really able to adapt. And I just think they're so beautiful and you can actually use them for cut flowers and they just take care of themselves. Beside them, I'm gonna do some different varieties of Baptisia. Now, I love Baptisia because again, super simple. It takes care of itself. You know, a lot of the original varieties were in just the blues. This one, you can see I have one, I haven't tried the Twilight, I'm kind of excited about it because it has little tinges of yellow but eventually these become very big, like three to four foot wide and tall with big spires of flowers. And then they get fun seed heads on them. They're really great for floral arranging because they can be used as just a filler if they don't have the flowers. Either way to me, they're so fun and I'm dotting them in all the way down the line. Another tall one here towards the back half of the bed is one of my favorites and I never have a good spot for it. So this is one of the first times I have a good spot for Culver's root. And what I like about it is it has beautiful tall spires of kind of a light purple to white flower. I put some of this in my mom's house a few years ago too, and it's just so pretty. I love how the leaf pattern you can see comes out of the center. Isn't that so cool with the five leaves? So even the foliage itself to me has some unique qualities to it, and that's what's great about this whole area. We have textures with leaves, with flowers, all of that. And then another Baptiste I'm using is the Decadence Deluxe Pink Truffles. I haven't tried this one either, but what I love about it is it has that lighter purpley pinky color to it. So it kind of will really stand out against the dark green of the Arborvitae here in the back. And that's what I want. I want these things to have definition since there's such a dark green wall. I want them to be able to have that varying color and that's what will be really fun. So all these things I've been doing now is setting them out and measuring out where I want them. They're not in perfect centers, but what you're gonna notice, I am doing groupings of odd numbers. Usually it's around groupings of five, or sometimes it's groupings of three. I talk about this often. Odd numbers always are more pleasing to the eye, both in the landscape, in home design, whatever it is. We often choose odd numbers in plantings because it has a more naturalistic grouping to it, kind of how mother nature would group. It's not usually an even symmetrical things, it's in odd numbers. What I also like about what I'm doing is, I'm doing pockets of mass plantings, mini mass plantings. So five grouping of one plant will create this beautiful mass. So when it blooms, it's really gonna stand out, especially from a distance from my house, because this is across the yard all the way at the corner. You'll look across and see pockets of color. And that's what I want. That's a good way to make 
a plant seem bigger and more impactful is just to do it in a grouping. And that's usually what I do in most of my areas. At the back of my shed, over yonder, I have groupings of different plants all along the back. And so I'm doing somewhat the same here. The one variation would be the Baptisia. I'm not doing five of those together because they get so big and impactful on their own. They don't need that grouping really to do that. So now comes the fun part. We're gonna start planting. As you remember, we amended the bed. We fertilized the bed. So now the big thing is going to be when I plant each one, I wanna make sure I give it a good starter fertilizer, a good beginning fertilizer to make sure it just has everything it needs. So once I have my hole dug, any of my holes for all these plants, I'm always gonna put a handful of the biotone in it. So it gives me to me a little bit of extra insurance. It zhuzhes it up a little bit for those roots. And what's great about it is, you know, when I amended this, when I put in the plant tone at the top level, it really only worked it in with the tiller about four inches. This is putting it right in with the roots, this biotone, which really helps just activate them, get them comfortable in this growing environment and start wanting to give them what they need as they start growing into the soil. So I pop that right in the soil. Then I take out my plant and it will always be different, different sizes plants. All of these are about a gallon size. And that's a great plant to start with. Sometimes I just start with four inch size. A lot of these perennials grow really quickly and will adapt and fill in in no time. So you don't have to feel like you need always the biggest plants. Perennials, once they hit the hot summer sun, they're gonna grow no matter what. So I will just slightly break up the roots. Again, nothing too major. These aren't too root bound. It's very easy for me just to slightly open them up, pop it right in the hole, you can go about two times bigger. I know that's what everyone says. I don't always go, I don't always go exactly two times bigger. It depends what my area is like. My soil is pretty nice here. It's pretty loamy and easy for the roots to get through. If you have very heavy clay or rocky soil, going two times bigger and then amending your soil with about 50% of compost to 50% of that native soil, that's going to give them even more of a comfortable atmosphere to start growing in. So never do complete amending of 100%, like just backfilling with only compost. You wanna work some of your native soil in so the plants do get used to using that native soil. So I'm just gonna put that all back around. Once I get everything planted, we'll go in and we'll start watering. But already one is planted, only, you know, a few more to do. But here's the thing. Sometimes I use tools, like I'll use awesome augers, power planters to actually plant things and I love them. But sometimes I use shovels because guess what? That's a tool we all have. And so you can do this with anything, any adaption you can work with just a tool with your hands to actually plant a big area like this. So you can see I'm gonna work in sections. I'm gonna do in between each of these statues. Okay, people are always asking what are these statues? They're not creepy like figures of old family members or something. These are, they represent the four seasons. So it's from a company, I got them locally at a garden center, but they represent the four seasons and the company that makes them uses old antique molds. So they're old statues, but made new. Um, and each one represents a different season, spring, summer, fall, winter. I just kind of like them out here because in the garden, especially in this area, you see all four seasons. Sometimes you're looking at this side of the yard from the house in the winter through windows. And so you see it each season looking so different. Anyway, that's what the statues are. But I'm going to work in between kind of each one planting, which goes fairly quick, even by hand. It's work, it's elbow grease. It's our workout. It's what we do. It's, it's like CrossFit or I'm gonna say it's like CrossFit. I wouldn't know. So now what I'm gonna do is continue planting for a while and then we'll kind of talk about the one plant I'm missing, how I'll wrap that up in a different video, but uh, I'm gonna get to planting some more.
I'm doing the last two here for the moment for all the planting I have. And really, yeah, so it does take time, it does take work. Honestly, per section, like in between each section where I had, oh, probably around 15, 20 plants each, it took me about 12 minutes, 10 to 12 minutes, which really isn't that bad. I was working somewhat quickly, but it seems sometimes like a big task to begin with, but the payoff in the end is going to be monumental when these things start growing in. And that's what the best part of this really is. It always takes a little bit of elbow grease in the beginning, and sometimes it can seem like a lot to do it on your own, but you then get to enjoy it for years to come. And a lot of these plants, if you want to, you could really start by planting only a few. All of these plants grow larger, grow into bigger masses. If they don't naturalize on their own, they just get bigger. And you can take starts from them. And you can put those starts in at other places in your yard. In early spring, when things are just beginning to show signs of life, I'll split a lot of plants, separate them, and get free plants, put more plants in other places. So these are all planted, and now the big thing is going to be watering. So let's talk about watering, talk about what's coming up in the next video, and how we're going to finish it all up. So now that the first batch is all planted, which is honestly most of the plants, I have one more plant I'm waiting on. It's actually one of my favorites. It's a great smelling, great pollinator. I can't wait to show it to you in the next video. And it's going to fill in any gaps you see in the front kind of border of the bed. But what I will do is blow off with just my leaf blower any soil I got up onto the path just to make sure it stays over in the bed and doesn't get debris down into the rocks here. But now I'm going to water it really well. That's for a couple reasons. You want to make sure all the air bubbles are out of the holes we just planted to place all that soil. If I was really dry right now, like if it was the middle of summer, I would have watered each hole as I was digging it and planting. Right now we've had some really nice rains and I'm not too worried about the moisture in the ground. It's there. So now I'm just going to go through and water it all really well. Once I get the rest of the plants planted in the next video, we'll mulch it also in that video. And I'll talk about the importance of mulch, why we mulch, what kind of mulch I use, because that's really going to be then our second line defense to keep the weeds down and keep the water there. So you can see it takes some work, but garden beds can come together. You can have a naturalistic plan more like this does, or a more put together straight lines perfect rose plan too. Either one works for whatever works for your personality, for your landscape, for your interests, your enjoyments, and your likes. That's the important. You have to enjoy your garden, then you'll be excited to work in it. So thanks for watching. I'm going to go water and do a few more things, and then we'll finish up the bed at the next video.